After the Civil War, a number of Confederate veterans, all the Confederate veterans, returned to Washington County after winning or losing the battles over there. And they found the county occupied by Union troops. Well, this occupation wasn't going very well. So what they did is they started a fire company. They weren't allowed to have a militia. They weren't allowed to have a police force. So instead, the fire company acted as both. It acted as the fire department for fire defense. But if the bells rang one time, you were to bring your rifle. If it rang twice, you were to bring your bucket and your shovel to fight a fire. The conflict between the Union troops and the people of Brennan ended up burning the city three times. Of course, this fire truck, was, her name is Samantha. Germans love naming things. Um, this wasn't around at that point. She's from the 1920s. Um, we didn't purchase her for the museum. She was used by the Brennan Fire Department in the 1920s. She was used through the 1950s, actually, if you can believe that. Um, she still works great. She still holds pressure. We could fight a fire in the event of a zombie apocalypse if we had to. <laughs> we, uh, we probably we wouldn't want to do that, but we could do. Um, of course, we still run these in parades, um, no, most notably uh, in the Mayfest parade. We run this. Um, this is the truck that the mayor likes to ride in, obviously. Um, over here we have Invader. This is a 1950 American in France. Samantha is also an American in France. Um, they didn't name the Invader. Um, he came with the name. <laughs> um, but both of these are both fully functional um, and they're still on the official fire department um, books as equipment. Um, we're very lucky to have these pieces of history left. There's another fire engine outside we want to show you as well. I love this particular detail. I've heard of wireless technology. Well, wow. can't really have a guy hanging outside the truck to ring the bell. <laughs> so they have a rope to ring it. So that's, yeah. That's... The wall in the back, this wall runs the length of the building, um, lists all of the people who have been a member of the Brennan Fire Company from the 18, or late 1860 to the present day. These first couple of panels are the Confederate veterans that returned from the Civil War to man the pumps, so to speak. Um, D.C. Giddings um, is probably the most recognizable figure on here. Um, financier, industrialist, um, politician, owned the big mansion up on the hill. In the uh, 1880s, as a result of the burning of Brenham a number of times, insurance rates went sky high through the city. And, uh, it became a place that was difficult to do business. It became known as, Brennan became known as the city. If you wanted your business to burn, you brought it here. So it was very difficult to get new investment and new commerce here. So they did a couple of things. One is they put a cistern underneath every new building in town as they rebuilt it for firefighting. And uh, the other thing is they bought this. This is a late 19th century Silsby steam powered, horse drawn oh my fire God. engine. Wow. It was uh, it's the same type of fire engine used in Chicago during the Great Fire, in San Francisco during the Great Fire. Um, it's, it still works. It's been restored. We don't use it. But as you can see, it was rebuilt. The first time it was rebuilt, it's so old, was in 1901. That was, oh my God. That, so that's the rebuilt yeah, year? Yeah, rebuilt year. Wow. It's a beautiful thing. Um, no kidding. It's very rare to have a community that can owe its prosperity largely to one historic object. And in Brenham, we can point to this and say, this is where our prosperity is drawn from, this is one object. They spent $3,000 on this late 19th century when you can get a horse for $5. So that was your car. You can extrapolate, do a little math. Wow. This is kind of like the city buying the space shuttle. Huh. There's a height of engineering technology. It practically screams steampunk. 